Welcome to Cheers. I'm your host, Avery Woods. Hi guys, welcome back to Cheers. I'm your host, Avery Woods, and I'm kind of drunk. I will be totally (laughs) honest. We are in Austin, Texas. And I have a very special guest, Miss Courtney Shields. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you so much for being on Cheers. It's an honor. I I mean, you know, I've followed you forever. I've been obsessed with you and I told you that. But when we met at the Dibs event in Scottsdale, we talked about this. And I was like, you have to be on Cheers with me. And so you just launched your podcast, Courtside with Court. Yes, ma'am. And I love it so much. So we just Thank recorded you. her episode on her podcast right before this and she got me my favorite Kim Crawford wine and I'm like a well, bottle deep we started drinking it about four hours ago yeah. so yeah and then after this I was like let's do like some Austin shopping and food and we're gonna go shopping and then we're gonna go get drinks I'm gonna do your glam and then we're gonna go out I'm so excited and that's so Courtney we'll go back to like all the things I want to ask her but she is the founder of dibs which I, you guys know, I use every single day. Like, I love my dibs. And I don't just say that because I'm in your presence. Like, you know I love it. Thank you. So she's doing my glam, which I'm so thrilled about because you do the best glam. Thank you. I'm so excited because Avery doesn't do much with the eyes. Like, your skin is always skinning and your eye color is so pretty. You obviously don't need anything. But I'm just excited because I feel like it'll be different. Oh, Switch for it up. sure. Yeah, I feel like you're going to make me look feel like really hot. A million bucks, girl. And I love that. Okay, so this is all about you, my queen. Um, I want to hear like about your childhood. I know you said you were born in Manhattan, but you grew up in Austin. I grew up here from the time I was about one and a half. Okay. And you liked it? I loved it. Okay. Um, I definitely struggled a little bit as far as like being bullied and stuff like that in middle school. Mm -hmm. Um, But all in all, I had a really happy, very grounded, like family centric childhood. Mm -hmm. My shit hit the fan for me probably six years ago okay so it was good and then everything like all of my trauma is 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 as an adult yeah and you've been through so much and I feel like you and I vibe in the sense of you are such a boss ass business bitch and you've never let your haters get to you and you've always been so strong and I feel like that's why we clicked immediately because you've kind of been on that same vibe together But first of all, I want to go back to like, did you go to college? How did you get into influencing? Like what, what is that all about? Because I honestly don't even know. So I went to Berkeley College of Music in Boston. You went to Berkeley? Yeah. So (laughs) Berkeley, Boston and Berkeley, California are two different Berkeleys. People always think it's Cal Berkeley, but Berkeley in Boston is the music school. And I thought, fun fact about me, I thought I graduated college. I'm 36 years old for reference. And I thought I graduated college up until about seven months ago. Wait, really? (laughs) Yep. Um, We were, you don't know the story. I've only ever told it one time. I've only ever told it one time on one podcast and that was it. Okay. So. Because you know people are like, oh my God. No, I just didn't know. Oh, okay. I don't first, I don't give a fuck about that. I just didn't know. Got it. Until seven-ish months ago. So I co-founded Dibs. We launched it, which we can get into. Um, But that was two Septembers ago. We had been working on it for much longer than that, but we just raised our series A. So investors about, I want to say my like track of time right now is crazy, but I want to say it's seven or eight months ago, something like that. So during diligence, we raised with a company called El Catterton. They're amazing. And it was like absolutely our number one pick. And so it's a branch of LVMH, all that. So with El Catterton, they do diligence on all of their founders because they only back the best founders in the world. So it's really important. They go through this whole diligence process. So one day there's four total co-founders of Dibs. One is myself, um, Jeff, our CEO, who Mm -hmm. was formerly working with A-Rod and J-Lo. He's amazing, lawyer by trait, just like grade A human being. Um, And then Dan and Ken, who I also have just like immense respect for, the founders of Tula, also the founder of Bobby Brown. Oh, nice. Okay. So the four of us comprise the founders of Dibs, Mm -hmm. and we're in the middle of our raising our Series A with Catterton, and we're there, and they're like in in the middle of diligence. So they go through everything. So I get a call one day from Dan, and he calls me, and he says, hey, do you have a minute? And I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, 
Um, I just have to ask you something. So we're in the middle of diligence right now. Quick question. Doesn't matter. No one cares. Um, but we're just going through diligence. They're like buttoning everything up. Did you graduate college? I'm like, yeah, obviously. He's like, okay, well, it looks like it's coming up like you didn't. Um, <laughs> So we need to figure this out. I call my mom panicking 30 minutes later. And I'm like, mom, I graduated college, right? Because this is such a me thing to do. To let something so simple and easy. It's like I have the full confidence. I have absolute full confidence in myself that I can accomplish anything that I want to do. I see no ceiling and I will get anything done that I want to do. Like whatever I set my mind to, I will do it. But I will absolutely forget to pay like the water bill or something. Like something it's like $15. really basic that I just like <laughs> completely just because I forgot or like I didn't know where I put it or something. Yeah. So this is so me. So my mom's like, yeah, of course you graduated. You had a graduation party. We walked, like we, we flew up to Boston. We watched you walk the stage. I got a graduation present, the whole nine. And then she calls me back about 20 minutes later and she's like, uh, you know, now that you're saying this, I don't ever remember actually receiving your diploma. Oh, this is 12 shit. years ago. And I'm like, what, Not 12 years what do you mean? Ago. She's like, well, uh, yeah, I don't actually, I didn't really think about it at the time, but I don't think that we ever received your diploma. Fast forward. I did not in fact graduate college. I have one credit left Oh shit! and it's ensemble, which is banned for anyone who's not familiar with music terms. So I have one credit left and it is literally a band credit. Is it too late to go back? Well, I ended up posting <laughs> one video about this. The video went viral mm -hmm. and Berkeley emailed me and they were like, so we, we heard you need help finishing graduating. I haven't emailed them back yet, but. Wait, that's actually amazing. Good <clears throat> yeah. for Berkeley. So hopefully we can figure it out. Yeah. Um, but I don't know, it's kind of funnier. What did you study? Songwriting. Good for you. I can see it. Performing and songwriting. I loved I loved it, but I didn't ultimately want to do it as my career. Yeah. So how did finishing, well, semi-finishing college and then getting into... I just left, I say you now. Just, you're like, bye. I left, done. left college, not graduated. <laughs> and then kind of go into how influencing came about from there. I was married at the time to a Dallas cowboy. Yep. Um, spoiler alert, I'm divorced, but I was married at the time. I mean, I wasn't going to say it, but it's okay. <laughs> um, and he, I was teaching kids guitar and piano. Oh, cute. I was working at Nordstrom okay. in the beauty department and I was hustling. Wait, why is that so you and really so cute? me? I kind of loved it. I have you seen marvelous Miss Maisel on no. Amazon? You would love that show really? and it's giving that vibe okay. and you would that's gonna be your new favorite show. Okay, I'm Watch excited. That. I need a new show. It's so good. Okay, I'm looking and forward to it. And she works at like the makeup counter, but she wants to be a comedian. It's really, really cute. You would love it. Okay, I'll have to watch. I'm okay. really excited. I love this for you. So I was working at the makeup counter. I was teaching kids guitar and piano. And I was always that person for all of my friends when they said, hey, I'm going on a date. What do I wear? What makeup should I do? I need new foundation. My skin's oily. What do I buy? And so they were calling me from Ulta. And from Sephora and from Nordstrom, they're like, I'm in here. Like, what do I need? And I was giving these recommendations out and then it helped them. And so they were telling their friends and then these like third party people were calling me, hey, I'm friends with so-and-so. Can you give me a recommendation? And I started recommending things to all these people and really loving it mm -hmm. and realizing, wait, I've always loved this. And I liked the feeling of being able to help women feel more confident. I always say it's like outside in, inside out. And the truth of the matter, and I might get shit on for saying this, but like when you look good, you feel good. Absolutely. I, I 100% agree. And whenever you don't feel good, if I like I'm having a bad day, I'm like, get your ass up, put an outfit on, like wear a bright color, put a little lip liner on, like just get up, you know? And, and I think that helping people feel beautiful through being able to learn new tips and tricks and do their makeup became like a huge passion of mine. Mm -hmm. So I started sharing it online. This was like 10 years ago, started sharing it online and then it just grew. And it was always a really slow and steady burn for me. Like there was never a huge viral moment. I mean, I've had obviously like viral videos on TikTok and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. pretty consistently, but there wasn't a moment that spurred a lot of growth when it was primarily Instagram and a blog at this point. So did you start blogging first or Instagram first? Kind of at the same time. Okay. And you're mostly doing beauty or fashion or just both? Beauty primarily, but also fashion. It would be like how to look hot at the gym. Oh, that's actually <laughs> really... I would see, I would like stop scrolling on TikTok though if I saw that. Yeah. Because I love that stuff because when I go to the gym, I feel intimidated. Like at Pilates, I feel fine because it's like 10 girls oh, and all yeah. just girls. But like if I'm weightlifting, 
I, I want to feel put together in myself. So I love when girls do like a little bit of lip liner and lip gloss. Well, you should feel cool. amazing at the gym because your body, <laughs> guys, her body in person is so insane. I remember thinking that when I saw you at the dibs event, I was like, holy shit. Um, but yeah, you should feel only anything but confident. Well, like everything. But when I asked you at the, at the dibs event, I was like, what the fuck are you doing? Because your body's insane. Thank you. And you're like, I just go and walk. So I was like, oh, that's crazy. Pilates. Walks and Pilates, and mm. I lift, but I lift minimally. And y'all, I'm a grandma, and so I went to lift a ten pound weight yesterday and pulled my neck out. This I spent the girl, whole day on the couch. Y- this poor girl has had like a little, what is it, like a heated, it's neck like a pad heated rice neck pad on her neck all day. So thank you for like sitting here with me, and your neck being all kinked. I told Avery, I was like, I have to sit on this side of the camera because I can only turn towards you. Oh, no, this is actually like the side I sit on for the podcast. So oh, it's perfect. Perfect. Okay, so when. Did you realize like, holy shit, I could make this my job? Probably when I was pregnant with Kinsley. Okay. When I was pregnant with my daughter, things started to pick up and I started to actually make money and I wasn't making a ton of money at the Mm -hmm. time, but I was making enough that I could afford to leave Nordstrom. It was a small salary, but it was a salary Mm -hmm. and I felt good about that. So it was probably, I guess, six years ago then. Dang. So I didn't, it's so been a crazy. minute, girl. Well, because so many things have happened in the last six years for you that like six years doesn't feel that long ago, but also you've experienced so much that it probably feels like forever. It was everything at one time. Mm-hmm. So I didn't make a dime for three years. That's crazy. Not a dime. And then everything happened sort of in the span of that one to two years. And it was right about the time I was pregnant. My dad got diagnosed with cancer I started changing and like this was now my full-time income it was I like to say that my life has been a collection of really high highs and really low lows and they're always at the same time yeah because I mean I want to touch on all those things but when your dad passed of cancer were your parents still married yeah what kind of cancer did he have colon cancer do you remember when you found out oh yeah um I was standing in my garage Mm. and I was six months pregnant And my parents called me when they were together. And I was really close with both my parents. And they lived at the time 15, 20 minutes away from me. And they called you. So I saw them all the time and they called me. They were leaving the doctor's office. And I remember thinking it was so weird that they called me together. And they just said that they needed to tell me something. And my dad said that he had cancer. And I was like, wait, 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 back it up. What? Because up until this point, my dad was super healthy, thriving. My dad was like George Clooney. (laughs) He was just this sort of, like he was the best dad. He was such a family guy. He came from nothing. Like my dad came from nothing and worked really, really hard. Built a company. He was an entrepreneur, which is where I think I get a lot of my like entrepreneurial um, senses. So I, cause I got to watch him build something from nothing. And so he came from nothing, built everything that he had and was the CEO of his company founded his company, played golf four days a week, drove a motorcycle, sports cars, built cars in the garage every day. Like he was so healthy until all of a sudden one day he wasn't. Mm -hmm. And how long after he was diagnosed did he pass? A year. Oh my God. So So Kinsley was six months old when he died. Oh, that's so heartbreaking. And it's, it really is like such a blessing that he was able to meet her, obviously, but it doesn't make it any easier as you like come into parenthood. Cause I feel like it yeah. hurts that much more. I think that was my, I'm all about perspective for me. Life is so much of life is perspective and how you choose to look at things and how you frame it. Because there's always someone that has it so much worse than you. And there's always someone that has it so much better mm-hmm. and that's life really. And when I think about my dad, I've chosen over the past, he passed five years ago. So over the past five years, or I guess like five and a half, um, I've chose to see the positives and I've chose to see that like I had such a great dad. I mean, we like got into it when I was younger for sure. Like we would argue because we're very similar, but I had such a great dad that I feel like so many people don't. And I feel really blessed to have had him for 30 years. It's not something that everybody can say, Mm -hmm. but my biggest thing, and I miss him every single day, but my biggest thing is that I wish Kinsley would have gotten to grow up with him. But one of my friends at the time said something and it always stuck with me. It's one of my best friends from growing up. And she said, I said, I just, I can't believe my dad's not going to get to know Kinsley and Kinsley's not going to know my dad. Yeah. And she just looked at me clear as day and she said, of course she will. And I was like, 
what do you mean? And she said, she'll know your dad because she knows you. Yeah. And you are so much like him. And you'll tell stories about him. And, and we do. We talk about my dad all the time. And she'll say constantly, because my a rainbow is my sign for my dad. And she'll say, there's a rainbow. She's like, Grandpa Ed says hi. And Aww. she talks about him all the time. So I still feel like even though he's not here, his memory, we've done a good job of still like allowing his memory to be with us consistently. Yeah. Did he do treatment or did oh, yeah. he, he did? Multiple surgeries, treatments, everything. And then the first time he had surgery, I remember they wanted to do a study on him because they were like, oh my gosh, we got it all. He's recovering. He's amazing. He's like thriving. And then a couple of weeks later, he started feeling like shit again. And it came back and it was like metastasized everywhere. Mm. So it was like, no matter what they did, they kept trying to um, remove it. And it just kept coming back. And I used to joke with him. We had this like dark sense of humor between the two of us. I was really pregnant at the time. Um, and he was making jokes about me being really pregnant, being in the pool. And I, was, I just looked at him one day and, um, and I, we were talking and I said, you know, um, you're not average why would your cancer be <laughs> you know like of course it's gonna come like with a vengeance and yep. like be fiery and and be big and because he was so big my dad was only 5'10 but he had such a big personality that from the time he passed the amount of, I can't even tell you the amount of people that have come to me and said I thought your dad was like 6'3 and I'm like no he was 5'10 but he just felt like such a big presence yeah like he was like the light of the room yes I love that. That man could tell a story. But that's how you are, though. Like Thank you. You have such an energy, and that's what you had talked about on your episode, that we were just kind of drawn to each other, but you attract people that you want in your life automatically, and you just give off that vibe. Thank you. And from what you've told me about Kinsley, she's the same way. She's, she's so badass. Like, no, she's <laughs> so badass. Six years old, and I'm like, I want to be like you. Same. She's so cool. Okay, so... We're going to talk about all the bad stuff first, and then we'll get to the fun stuff. Let's do it. Let's talk about your divorce. Yeah. So how long were you married for? Six years. Because I don't, <coughs> I, f I think I started following you in your post-divorce era, like right after you got divorced. Okay. So I will be told, I don't even know what your ex-husband looks like. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't even think about if I went I'll show you after this. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that later. So how did you guys meet? We met kind of just through mutuals. He played football at Boston College, okay. and I went to Berkeley, which is also in Boston. So we had mutuals, and then we also both spent time at one point. He's from Ohio. I spent like a year there. So we had mutuals there, and then we started talking on Facebook Oh, back in the day. It's almost like as bad as MySpace, like the top ten Almost, friends. yeah, basically worse. And then when, like, what was what was your thing where you were like, yeah, this isn't working out? To be honest, I never really talk about this publicly because he's the father of my child, obviously. So I try to keep it generally really positive. But I think the, the best thing or the like most clear thing is, that I can say is, A, I don't think we had a good foundation. Mm. And B, we grew apart. I grew a lot. The time that my dad passed specifically, I think I really grew. And I feel like he was in love with the version of me that I used to be. And I wasn't her anymore. And I shouldn't have wanted to be and I didn't want to be and I was really really proud of the person that I had grown into and it was all really positive changes and I felt like we didn't grow together um and then I when my dad passed I really didn't feel and I'm and again he has his whole own side of the story and his whole own thing and I really do respect him as a human being and as a parent but I didn't feel supported mm -hmm. when my dad passed and I think that was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back for me but it was already, we were already struggling. We just don't really get along, like, as just... Human beings. Human beings. And I have, again, so much respect for him as a parent. Mm -hmm. And I think he's a good person. Like, I think he's a good human being and a really good dad. Um, but he's just not my person. Yeah. And, there, and I think you've done such a great job at keeping it so classy. Like, Thank you... you have been through so much and, like, knowing you as a friend personally and behind the scenes. Like, you've been through so much shit with so many people, not just your ex-husband, but also, like, other people in the public eye. You know all the tea. No, dude, <laughs> and you keep your mouth zipped. Thank and you. that is something that is so hard to do, especially when so many people are asking you about it or see, you know, distance between people or leave comments publicly. Like, 
the restraint it takes to not defend yourself, especially when you're not in the wrong. is So, so that's hard. what's been hard for me, to be honest. The amount of times where people have asked me in certain situations, whether it was relationships, friendships, whatever, what happened, what happened? And I know that I'm not in the wrong, but the way that I was raised was you just take the high road. Yep. And you remain the bigger person and you worry about yourself and you don't drag anybody else through the mud. And unfortunately, along the way, people have tried to drag me through the mud. And I think I've just kind of said, okay, because at the end of the day, I think that people's character shines through Mm -hmm. eventually. And maybe that takes five minutes. Maybe that takes five years. But I think if you stick around long enough and you're really paying attention, when the dust settles, you'll see who's who and what's what. And I think that I've just chosen to conduct myself in a way where I felt proud of. And that looked like not dragging other people through the mud, regardless of what I felt or what I had to say. And my in in like IRL, obviously, in my inner circle and people who really know me super well will know the stories. But past that point, I don't speak about stuff like that. And I think unfortunately, people have been able to frame me as the person that's like in the wrong in a lot of situations where I simply haven't been because I've been unwilling to stoop to other people's levels. And I still just, I just won't do it. And it's, well, yeah, but I could, you, you could, and you've <laughs> kept it so classy. And I also think it's just one of those things where you will always feel better staying silent. Yeah. Let people assume what they want to assume. That's how I get to go home at the end of the night and lay my head on my pillow and fall asleep like a fucking baby mm-hmm. because I'm proud of the person that I am. And that's why when people do come for me, let them because there just isn't anything to come for and you can shit on me for like having lip filler or having my boobs done or like whatever other like dumb superficial things people try to come at me for but the reality is um I'm a good person and I know I'm a good person and the people that know me know that and that's really all that matters to me you know you also don't have to drag other people down to be successful and I feel like a lot of other people in the industry try to shit talk publicly or just rip everyone else down that's in the same industry to climb higher feels like a clout chasing thing it's clout chasing it's mean girl it's just not the vibe no and also where are a lot of those people now yeah because the people that i think hold their head high and and manage to maintain and like do what they do with class and really nobody's perfect no we're not perfect and so we're gonna have those moments where um we break down and like just have a good cry or whatever sometimes but all in all people that continuously hold their head high are the ones that win at the end of the day yeah so when you got divorced how did that go was it amicable did you guys like separate okay we had to live I've never talked about this publicly we had to live in the same house for a while while we were going through the divorce and that was really hard yeah, that's awkward. We were like on different floors. And that was really uncomfortable. Um, but I think it was as amicable as a divorce can be. Mm-hmm. It's divorce. So yeah. it's like at the end of the day, it's not easy. And it is really hard. And I had countless just tough, tough days. Um, but I think it, it was as amicable as divorce can be. Yeah. And how old was Kinsley when you guys got divorced? Two and a half. Does she remember that? No. So one time she was learning about like marriage or something in school and she came home and said something about being married. And I was like, well, you know, I was married to your dad. Because she said, I think, are you ever going to get married? And I was like, babe, I was married to your dad. And she goes, no, you weren't. (laughs) And it was then that I realized I did the right thing at the right time because I knew I could see the course of where it was going and why wait and struggle and be miserable and all like we obviously struggled and we did therapy and all the things but why be miserable for years and years and years and drag her through that and then decide to do this when she's 10 totally and, and like it, traumatize her she yeah. she doesn't know any differently and yeah. she does really well going back um between us and and that's just all she's ever known and i think that we do a really good job of putting her first and that's all that you really can do in this situation yeah and like you said you guys just warn each other's people yeah and that's okay and it was it was very clear to me and it remains clear I get that question a lot people are like do you think you and your ex would ever and it's like no yeah <laughs> and he he lives pretty close to you doesn't yeah. he because I know you've talked we about live like before. 20 minutes apart that's kind of nice yeah and you I know he has a girlfriend that mm-hmm. lives with him mm-hmm. so how's like the co-parenting situation because I know you and I bond a lot on that yeah aspect just because I'm on like the other side of it which is so interesting like having these conversations have been really interesting to get yeah that POV 
I think for me, the more people that can love on your kid, the better. Totally. I've tried to have and maintain that perspective. There have been moments where obviously it's tough. And I think sometimes something that's worked for us is like, hey, pick up the phone because sometimes things can get misconstrued over text or yeah. whatever. Um, but I really try to just on my side, I really try to just put Kinsley first and my feelings are irrelevant when it comes to like whatever is best for her is good for me. Yeah. And so I feel like we have had hard days for sure, but generally we try to put her first and really, I guess like work together where we can. For example, I have a family friend's wedding this upcoming summer and so and then my cousin's wedding so I said hey, it's not my weekend for my cousin's wedding but I would really love to bring Kinsley with me and also then this other wedding where I can't bring her like could we swap days there yeah sure so we try to be flexible when it comes to stuff like that and but past that I mean we don't hang out we're not and we're not BFS no and nor do we need to be no we're definitely not hanging out but and it's never it's those situations can just be a little bit uncomfortable um, but I try to focus on the positive moments we do, um, like, for example, um, Halloween together, which was really fun this year. Yeah, it's so Have, special like, some fun her. moments from that, and she really loved it, and we were all together. I hope we can eventually get to the place where we're doing more things, and you and I have talked about this with your situation as well. Mm-hmm. More things together, from my point of view, I would be down for that, but obviously that takes everybody being up for that. Totally. And does your... Sorry if this is TMI, but does your ex's girlfriend have kids of her own? No. And it's it's one of those things where, again, we're not, like, shitting on anyone. I just think, like, co-parenting is a huge topic I get asked about. Yeah. Because it's so difficult. And I wish I had someone in my shoes to look for 10 years ago that could help me through such a difficult time to navigate because... I've done so much learning and growing and maturing because obviously I became a stepmom at 18 where I was helping raise someone else's kids that were not yeah. mine. And obviously I look at them as mine, but from... And that's what you hope. Of course. Like that's what you hope of that person. Yeah. I would be like, what kind of person would I be if I sat and said like, I hope, like I don't want that. I want her to view Kinsley as part of her family because totally. I want Kinsley to be happy. Totally. That's the most important thing for me. So yeah. it's good for me if everything is great there so I really encourage that because that's that's the goal for me like I want her to be happy there and I want her to be happy with me yeah and when I you know when I had my blood children Ziggy and Stevie I was able to really take a step back and you know make sure that her feelings were prioritized but I also put myself in her shoes in the sense of god forbid david and i get divorced and some other woman fills my role in his household when there's special things that happen like small things like a shopping spree for their birthday or like a birthday dinner or a party like i've even thought about like when she starts her period if i'm not there 100%. like I, I hope i get that call like yes. hey come over like she because there's just some moments where you need your mom you need your mom 100 percent, and i'm I so I try to extend that invite and make sure she feels excluded and I know that included or oh sorry god included it's the wine thank (laughs) you for correcting me so I I try to you know invite her and include her I don't think she's maybe ready for it and that's okay and I don't know if she ever will be I think think that's that's the same thing in my situation but it's it's just the point of trying and I always make sure to like voice to my girls like they usually are the ones that communicate like we got them iPhones so we can FaceTime whenever how old were they when you got them iPhones um Oh gosh, eight and 10, but they had no internet. It was just texting and calling. First they had like the gizmo watches. That's what Kinsley wants right now. And I'm like six is a little young, babe. But I told her the same. I was thinking like nine or 10. And I'll tell you the reason why was because we had to like text his ex-wife. Like, hey, can we call it this time? It was just hard to coordinate. Mm -hmm. And then what what ended up happening was Dave and I upgraded our iPhones and we had our extras. And we're like, let's just tell, like turn on the cellular data Makes and then sense. we just kept it. 
but it was just hard going back and forth but I have them communicate I'm like hey why don't you text your mom and see if she wants to go shopping for your birthday like yes I, I love al- that I also think it's important to include them to show them that like I want to like I want to include your mom gap. it's not me like leaving her out or whatever intentionally 100%. yeah because that's something they'll remember forever yes and like I have to put my feelings aside and make sure that you know I have to think about if Stevie was in their shoes and I would want to be included Absolutely. because I would feel so heartbroken if not so it's just hard like co-parenting is so hard it doesn't matter how chill it is who you're dealing with like it's just like a it's a fragile subject absolutely and no matter how good your situation is it's always a hard situation totally and I think we're almost like doing a disservice to people if we don't say that it's hard because it is yeah and then it's also like setting this unrealistic expectation when I think we're doing a good job and where, the, like how I'm gauging that is because Kinsley's an amazing human. She's so cool. She's so cool. She's smart. She's resilient. She's like interesting and brave and kind. And she's so positive. And so we're doing a good job because she's turning out amazing. Mm-hmm. And that's really all that matters. And so whatever happens behind the scenes and behind the curtain is something that I want to kind of keep, you know, her, her knowledge needs to be minimal to that. Only ever speak really highly of them around her. And I think it's, Hopefully, you know, just better and better every day. Totally. So let's talk about dating. Let's talk about dating. Because I... (laughs) I had a third date last night. Okay, yes. I want to talk about that because your TikTok with like your dating advice and red flags is just thriving. Like I love that sort of court. Like exhale on that one. The amount of things that I've been through, and I say this on my TikTok, but I don't give advice on dating from my ivory tower. I give it because I have been divorced I've been engaged. I called it off. I've dated and I get it. Mm -hmm. I really get it. I've been love bombed. I've dated a sociopath. That was fun. (laughs) And so I have really, I've dated like amazing people and the fucking worst people. Like I've really dated the, the whole spectrum of amazing humans that I have absolutely nothing but wonderful things to say about. I still sing their praises to this day to like the worst people so I think for me I don't just know that I don't ever give advice thinking that like I'm perfect and um it's not this holier than thou thing it's like I've done it the right way and I've done it the wrong way and let me help you so that you don't fall into the same traps that I did and and hit the same speed bumps that I did and have to suffer some of the same bullshit that I did because I wouldn't wish that on anyone yeah and you so you talked about your engagement because I remember when that happened yeah I remember that whole thing and I was like it was, kind of, it was kind of fast, right? It was really, really fast. And How? that was part of the manipulation and the everything that I went through with that. And the crazy thing is that from the, and this is social media for you, but the outside looking in, I think that looked like, oh my gosh, this amazing day. My stomach hurt all day. When you got engaged? It <gasps> hurt all day. I was sick to my stomach. I had so much anxiety. Audrey too. Did you know what was happening? Um, yeah, I had a feeling. I didn't know for sure, but I had a feeling and Audrey too. She was like, I felt sick all day. Oh shit. I didn't know that. Yeah. I th- I'm a big believer that your body we'll will warn you. you before you know. 100%. Your body will warn you before your mind knows or like can necessarily comprehend what it is that your body is feeling. But recently, like a couple of weeks ago, I went on a few dates with someone and he was pretty love bomby and I had experienced that in full force in my engagement and so I could recognize it right away. And right away, I realized, it, again, I could feel like my heart was racing and people always sit and they say, oh, I have butterflies. It's like, no, bitch, that's anxiety. Yeah. That's not butterflies. That's anxiety. There's a difference. And there's a big difference. You should almost feel, in my best relationships, the person has almost made me like so comfortable and calm that like I get a little sleepy the first couple of times because you're just relaxed. Yes. And even when you're excited, you're just comfortable. There's a huge difference in that in feeling an overwhelming amount of anxiety. And that is your body trying to tell you that something is off. How long were you guys dating before he proposed? Four months. Four months? How? What was like your first red flag with him? Ooh, um, I think he became really jealous of my career. Really? He was really successful in his own right. No, I remember your ring, and I was like, oh, he does something. I felt like I was going to get kidnapped, to be honest. I think for me, it, like, sounded really great, and then I would wear it, and I was like, I can't wear this, like, out. I felt it was kidnappy. Are you able to see what he does or no? He ran a company. Okay. And how did you guys meet? Um, Raya. What's that? The dating app for, yeah. 
Not me, not knowing. I'm like the Disney movie Raya. No, no, it's like a, <laughs> a, it's like a bunch of it's celebrities or athletes. Oh, cool. Um, so people, people like the with followings, eye. and then there's people who aren't in the public eye too. They get referred that way, or just successful people, basically. Okay. And sounds so douchey. Why? No, it's not douchey at all. No, it's it's way different when you have a following because you people have bad intentions. Yeah. So I feel like that's kind yep. of nice that that platform exists because. Like you've told me in the in the past that you've dated people that want to be like TikTok famous and they want to use your platform yeah, for that. So there was that uncomfy. one time. Um, so he was running a company and I feel like he also drank a lot, mm. which I like to have a drink with friends. Totally. This kind of setting, but I'm not like a drinker. Yeah. And so I obviously when I go out, like I'll drink, but like I'm not at home by myself mm -hmm. drinking on a Tuesday. He was raising money for his company at the time. And that was always sort of the excuse. Like, oh, I'm just so stressed out. And when you have such a small sample size of knowing someone you don't really know yet, which is why I say I have like a 90 day rule. Yeah. Which is you really don't know someone. My best friend and I always joke, we'll say, like, we'll be talking to someone for a while and we'll look at each other and be like, I do not know this man. Because you really don't know someone at least for at least the first three months. People can really hide who they are and they can really present the best version of themselves to you for at least the three month mark is where I find like it, people unravel before that, but the three to four month mark is when people just like really can't hide it usually anymore. Yeah. hundred percent. And I feel like they always put on that show because they want you like locked in. And he was really, it was controlling and things like that. What? made him propose so soon was that like something you i guys think he about? no i think he wanted to lock it in mm -hmm. because he knew he was about to like spiral that's my theory but oh shit who knows okay so he spiraled yeah so after this is not funny but i this is really not funny but i've never really talked about this i always um keep it pretty it was really bad it was scary i had to get myself out of the situation like that's usually how i phrase it yeah but for me um I get like, I smile when I'm uncomfortable emotionally. So I don't actually think this is funny. This is just like, my em emotionally stunted response. Yeah. Well, I mean, we <laughs> talked about this off camera yeah. too. So I know like it's not a funny thing. But when I'm on camera and I'm having to talk about like heavy things, it's a little like. For Ooh. sure. Yeah. It's, it's scary. So once he proposed then, do you think things just like clicked and he was a different human? Yeah. I think he thought he had me, mm. but I don't work like that. No. So I think he thought he had me. So then he just started um, spiraling kind of from there. It was very like verbally abusive and then other things. So it was really, really hard. And I felt trapped, to be honest, um, for a while because I felt like I was already the girl that went through a public divorce. And again, like I stand behind myself on that. I feel 100% unequivocally. And my mom came, my mom was my first episode of my podcast ever. And she came on and I, Dad asked, looked her in the face, and I said, do you think I did the right thing, getting divorced? And she said, yes, 100%. I do. Good. And I do, too. I just want a happy I just want my soulmate. Is that too much to ask for? So when someone shows me that they're not a good person, it's like, of course, that's not Courtney can't hold a relationship. But it's like that is how people chose to – I thought that people were going to choose to spin that, and so I was nervous mm -hmm. for a while that it was going to be like, man, this girl just got divorced, now she got engaged, and she called it off. Like, what did she do? Yeah. And again, going back to whether it was friendships or whatever else, because I had never publicly trashed people and put that out there, people were left to run with their own narratives. And that started to look kind of like, well, what did I do? I also hate that it's fucking pinned on the woman. Like, yeah, the fact that it's pinned on a woman that's successful with a public platform because you had two relationships that didn't work out, it's automatically your fault. I hate that shit. And I think I didn't really know, to be honest, because I hadn't dated. I was with my ex-husband for like eight or nine years. And so that was my whole 20s. Yeah. So I didn't really know like what people are like. I didn't know what love bombing was. I didn't know what narcissists were. I didn't know what any of that was. I didn't think that people ha were capable of that level of deceit or because I'm not. So like I didn't recognize that in someone else I guess now I can see it a mile away because I've experienced it but I didn't recognize that yeah at first and so I think unfortunately I always thought that I would never be the girl in that situation but if it can happen to me it can happen to anybody which is why I give a lot of the advice I give on TikTok to help people avoid getting in the situations that I got into because I am so proud of the person that I am and the fact that I got out of that 
it, it was a, once I saw things for what they were, I immediately left and I never went back and I never saw him again. Did you guys live together? Not really. So it was like, he was almost in the process of moving in. We got a place in California together. What? So where? I'm <clears throat> on the beach. What beach? Um, not Malibu. Why am I blanking? Um, what's it? Huntington? Newport? No. Ocean? Or I mean. By Venice. What's by Venice? Orange County? It's like the one right by Venice. No, not the OC. It's fine. So whatever. We Something got a, we got a place. Uh, Santa Monica? Santa Monica. Yeah, yeah, Santa Monica. Okay, sorry. Oh, wow. Damn. Santa Monica. It was she beautiful. Bougie. It was beautiful. Um, and first of all, I felt really pressured to do that. Mm. But I was excited because it was also like beautiful and it was the beach and he wanted to be there because his company was there. Okay. And mine was home and I had Kinsley every other week. So I thought, you know, I'll sacrifice and I'll go there some and then be here. So we were kind of in the process of moving into that, having our stuff there together. And that's when shit really hit the fan. I did not know. So that. I really only went there that one time and then I never went back. Wow. Did you guys buy it? No, no, we were renting it. Oh, okay. That's good. My name was on the lease though and I had to get it off. So... You obviously ended the relationship. Was this an in-person thing or on the phone thing? Um, this was an in-person thing. And you were like, bye. Um, let's just say there was a, a Vegas hotel room and some bad shit that went down. And I had to get End it right to safety and get out of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I obviously know what happened like off camera but you did the right thing. Yeah, 100%. Like, no doubt. It's um, Because I also, knowing what happened, you also have a child. Yeah. And you could have had more children together. And I, I know how affected you are still to this day. So first of all, I'm proud of you Thank for you. leaving that. And I've I, never taught even remotely, like, touched yeah. on And I fucking this. hate, again, it's so hard. Like, we live such a privileged life where we can, you know, share a life on social media and make money from we're it. So, we're so blessed. We are so blessed, but we're also in such a sticky situation when, you know, we publicly announce relationships like that and it's gone, whether it's friendly or intimately, because I know how much shit you got for ending that. But I also know you would be in far more turmoil if you would have stayed. Oh, it would be so bad. Yeah. So, Can't even imagine. It yeah. would be so bad. Um, I think... For the most part, when I actually chose to come on, and I think I said something, I was I honestly feel like I blacked it all out because I was in such a post like trauma reaction um, that it was all a blur. But I felt like in that moment, I said something along the lines of, um, "I the situation was really bad, and I need to get out of it." And I think people could see that I was emotional and that I meant it, and that it was a really unfortunate situation. And because of that, it didn't matter what like the really small percentage of people said because most people really showed up for me mm -hmm. and most people like my following is so amazing and I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful for them. They've been riding with me on this journey for so long that most of them saw that for what it was and was like, yes, get out. Like, thank God you're okay. Thank God Kinsley's okay. Like get out of the situation. Um, and I think again, as much as I don't want to be the person that has to talk about all this hard shit, it is, if I can help someone else, like give someone else the strength to leave a heart, like a bad situation too, then it will have been worth it. But it was right about the time I ended it when we were shooting the photos to launch the first ever dibs photo shoot. Oh. It was like a couple of weeks after that. And that's what pulled me out of the darkness. Mm -hmm. It was this moment of like, get up, bitch. Like you got things to do. This is something you've wanted your whole life. No one is going to take that from you. And speaking of that, let's talk about it. Because I I am at the point in my career that, like, I gain nothing talking about anything but, like, things that I love. Like, I genuinely thrive off working with companies or just using products that I love. And, you know, like, I think I did one campaign with Dibs, like, last week on my stories. But, like, that was other the than that. the first one. Yeah, but, like, other than that, I just genuinely fucking love the product Thank and again you. like i get so much shit sent to my house every day that i've tried everything on the market and it's just what i gravitate towards every day so i think you, you guys have like truly kicked ass in this company and i know that was like one of the first things i talked with you about at the dibs event but like talk to me about how dibs started it's so fun it all kind of spurred from a tula collaboration that i did years ago 
ended up being at the time like the highest grossing day in the history of the company for Tula and both of the co-founders were like who the hell is this they reached out and Dibs was born from that then we brought Jeff in and it's been so fun like I really feel like I'm doing what I've meant to be doing yeah and it's for those that don't know Dibs <coughs> is, stands for desert island beauty status which yes, is ma'am. basically like if you're on a desert island what would you choose so if you guys have seen me get ready and I have like my little pink stick and one side's <laughs> contour one side's blush that's Dibs my like dual ended brush that's dibs. We like, wanted to give people more. It was like yeah. more time back, more for your money, more uses of products. And I wanted to make things that were kind of like multi-use and you could do them everywhere. You were saying earlier, like I do it as my bronzer. I do it in yep. my crease. I do it all these places. And we wanted to give you more, especially for like busy people who have shit to do, but they want to look hot. We wanted to give you more um, uncomplicated color combinations, like pairing things together to take the guesswork out, make it super easy, but also do it in a way that was like sexy and fun and cool. Because I feel like so many products that are more multi-use are were like boring, honestly. Mm-hmm. And I never gravitated towards them. I feel like, especially as women, we shop with our eyes. I wanted it to be pretty. Totally. And like the best formulas and smell amazing. So it's sort of this whole... Um, full circle experience where you're smelling it and then it's shimmery and it just makes you feel good it's like a joy to vive thing yes and I remember like back in my nursing days when I did like a I think I did like a get ready with me on my stories where I did like my my five products to get ready with me at like 5 a.m and one of them was dibs because I got two for one it makes me so happy that's like the exact reason that we started yes. the brand, like for things like that yes and it's like it doesn't matter if you're like a businesswoman on the go a stay-at-home mom a nurse <clears> like there's so many uses out of it and you've just like thrived in this era Thank and it you. makes me so happy and you don't need a master class like truly anyone can do it you cannot mess it up like if you're scared of creams or you're scared of blush or you've never contoured before like try it I promise it's gonna be it's the easiest thing ever yeah and it's after this we're gonna go shopping but we're gonna go out for a little bit and Quartz can do my makeup and I'm, I'm so, excited. so excited to do your glam I can't wait because I'm like I mean, I use dibs every day, but, like, I want the founder of dibs to do my glam. I got you, girl. Like, that's iconic. I got you. Okay, so let's talk about dating because... Let's dive in. You just went on, like, kind of a successful third date. It was a successful third date, and I usually, to be honest, I know, like, if I'm not into somebody, I mean, still barely know him. It has not been 90 days, um, so you know my rule, <clears throat> but still... I eliminate people so quickly because I'm very, very crystal clear on what I want and what I am not willing to accept and I'm not willing to settle. We talked about your story Mm -hmm. with your husband, how you guys (laughs) met, and that's what I want. Like I, It's so inspiring to me. We talked about that on your episode of my podcast, and it's so inspiring and and encouraging because that I know that that's out there, and I am unwilling to settle for anything that isn't that. Yeah. So dating is a part of that journey. You got to... There's lots of frogs. We'll just say that. But the third date yeah. was successful. Oh Some yeah, tea. we made pizzas, and it was really fun. He's so cute. He is really. Cute. He seems like really thoughtful. She told me she. Can I say about the list of the, of the dates? Yeah, sure. She he like <laughs> really some real tea. It's so cute. He like texted her a list of like it was like six or eight different like date night ideas and like let her pick. Like I love that shit. If he wanted to, he would. It was a lot of effort. But that's a man. But that's how I'm dating right now, right? It's like intentionally because I'm putting a lot of intention in. I don't have a lot of free time. So if I'm going to take time away from working and my friends, like anything like that, I don't obviously take time from Ken's. It's like different weeks. But on my Mm -hmm. non-Kinsley weeks, if I'm going to take time away from the things that are really important to me and the life that I've built because I love the life that I built. I say this all the time. Being single is not lonely. Yeah. <clears throat> being trapped in a shit ass relationship that's lonely so I just refuse to do it so for me if I'm going to take time away it has to be a situation I'm really excited about and I want the person to put an in intention because it's intentional for me what's your type I don't know if I have a type but tall for <laughs> sure when it comes to like physically they have to be witty oh yes they have Smart. to make you belly laugh emotionally intelligent like if you can't banter mm-hmm. with me and you're not emotionally intelligent like I'm immediately turned off that's right if you can't cry don't date (laughs) I don't think I have a type as far as like I don't care about your hair color your eye color whatever I've always been like drawn to taller guys it's not a deal breaker I mean like maybe at a certain height it's a breaker (laughs) but it's not like a deal breaker in that regard to me I want someone that's genuinely nice and genuinely kind I think I've dated 
Um, I had like a fuck boy era because I dated people. Allie, my producer's back there laughing because it's true. Um, and we met through my ex who she knows I'm talking about, but I have, I had this era of feeling like people, I need someone who's really confident Mm -hmm. and I'm realizing in hindsight, it was a uh, false sense of confidence. I thought people would come and they'd be these big personalities kind of life at the party, but they weren't truly confident. They were actually really insecure. So now I just want someone who's grounded and humble and kind and funny and hot and tall, preferably. Can we talk about sex? (laughs) Yeah, sure. (laughs) So we were talking on my pot or on your episode, I'm sorry, of your podcast where we were like the hate that, <laughs> Last sip of that wine. yeah literally i'm like chug it the hate that gets like that surrounds vibrators and i can't like deal with that it's like the lack, justice for the vibrator <laughs> it's the lack of confidence of men they're like oh you want to use a vibrator during sex am i not good enough it's like shut the fuck up and just keep going like just like click stop. it again i literally can't deal with that so like yeah do you have a rule when it comes to sex of like when you'll put out or is it just like a feeling or a vibe that it's you get? It's a vibe. Okay. Um, for me, it's all about a vibe and it's all about my intention in the moment. Mm-hmm. There have been times when if I'm not looking for a boyfriend or like when I haven't been looking for a boyfriend, that looks really different than when I want to date you. Yeah. And for me, like that will ebb and flow. I don't think that there's a right answer and a wrong answer. I think you can sleep with someone on the first date or you can wait 800 months if you want to. I don't give a fuck. Like, do you do you? I'm the least judgmental person when it comes to this. For me, it's all about a feeling and I trust myself, my intuition. I'm confident enough in myself to know that like I'll know when the time is right. Yeah. Oh, I had sex with my husband on the second date and we've been together for 10 years. You just know. So I think too, by the way, the worst kind of man, because it's so misogynistic and hypocritical. If you hook up with someone... And they judge you for it. It's like, bitch, you were here too. What? You I haven't. Had that no, happen? no, no. I haven't struggled with that. But I oh, have okay. had friends who I think like the guy loses interest because they sleep with them. I mean, that's like an age old tale, I feel like. Um, and for me, it's like, that's good. Weed your ass out. Like it's the easiest person to say, keep it pushing to. So for me, I don't have a set timeline. I just go based on how I feel. And that has never let me down. Um, I'm confident in that department. And that has never let me down like I feel like I'll know when the right time has come what turns you on like men taking control or do you like taking control I like to ebb and flow with that this is so specific but like non-sexual turn-ons too I guess this like leads to an eventual sexual turn-on but like big hands okay big hands but do you know what I was talking to my girlfriends about the other day is Mm -hmm. and Scotty counts as my girlfriend it's obviously obviously he is just such a fucking I'm watching vibe. him put on his dibs lip gloss earlier no, over there is, slay scotty no he's literally a vibe it's i will never even with my husband to this day no woman wants to put out if they don't feel emotionally connected to a man must like even if my husband and i are just like aren't vibing if we're just like having kind of an off week like i'm sorry i don't have sex with you no and men don't get that because men can look at you and they think you're hot and there's a physical attraction and they have like a blinder they're like they want to fuck women need to feel an emotional connection in order to feel like we want to do that so i think the deeper your emotional connection is so like if somebody listens to me there's nothing more like, there's nothing hotter than feeling understood. Yes. And it's also, like, the better your intimacy, the better your relationship. But also, intimacy does not come with a shitty relationship. Like, it all coincides. And people are always like, your your marriage is amazing. Your sex life's amazing. I'm like, yeah, because they go together. Yes. It's all the I also same. think, so for me, that's why, like, lately, especially, typically, I've been waiting longer. Because for me having sex with someone that I don't know that well, that I'm not emotionally connected to is boring. Yeah. Like that does not sound exciting or fulfilling at all to me. Like I want to know you. I want to understand you. I want you to know me and understand me because it's going to be so much better. I have no desire to just like, I'm 36 years old. Like I've, I've been here. Like I don't need to just do that to do it. It's it's just not exciting to me. Sex and intimacy are two completely different categories. But I think one, one together, they're amazing. One without the other, you can have, intimacy and your sex is going to be amazing but if you have sex without intimacy it's just so lackluster totally and who has time for that wait i love this wait we're kind of getting like sexy i love it okay so do you like lingerie yeah of course what's your favorite brand i don't know kirsten what's that brand that i like i go to l's here 
<clears throat> we can put it in the description or something. I'll, there's this really bougie lingerie boutique here. Don't go unless you want to drop a pretty dime. Oh, but it's shit. called L's. And it's stunning. It's all like French lingerie. Ooh. And I'll wear that shit for me too. No. Like there's so much stuff right now sitting in my drawer with tags that no man has had the blessing of seeing on because it's it's not for you. You know what? I have so many photos of myself in my own camera roll with lingerie that I'm like, I don't even say, like I'll just look at it for myself. Like yeah. I'm feeling like shit about myself today. I just feel nasty. Hype yourself up. I Click on that photo of myself and I zoom in and I'm like, no, you're looking pretty good after two kids. <laughs> you look pretty damn good. Look, Can confirm. I just yeah. saw you naked a minute ago. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> I, we're staying in like, is that considered downtown Austin? Yeah, downtown. And it's my favorite hotel. Yeah, here. the hotel's so cute. And the whole hotel room's like a giant window and Scotty's sitting in bed <laughs> and I'm like, hey, Austin, good morning. I'm like completely naked. I showed Courtney that video and she's like, oh my God, your like, body damn girl, is so you look cute. good. Uh, for real. <laughs> it's the new titties. Okay, let's talk new about titties that actually. Are great. I want to talk about that because I, in march yeah march of this year so coming wait up how on long year, ago was that okay mine was like maybe eight months ago okay yeah because i so i we never talked about this but i was naturally a 34 double d okay same yeah i had huge boobs and my sister's a 34 triple d she never had kids so we're just like very busty family yes but, i was 34 double d until i had kinsley and then they got significantly smaller because i breastfed her for nine months okay. and she sucked them dry oh they were so sad the saggy socks so, someone told me that at nordstrom so when i was at nordstrom someone said and i quote She's like, oh, your boobs, like, they're great. They're pregnancy boobs, whatever. Like, they're perky, they're juicy, they're full. She's like, just wait until you breastfeed. They're going to look like socks. And I stood there horrified. And I was like, oh, yeah. damn. And no, it's, she's not wrong. I remember, like, being on all fours at the gym. <laughs> this is like, visual. Oh, they're my just, God, like, it's so bad. <laughs> hanging. And I was wearing, like, a sports bra. I was like, I'm feeling myself, like, post-breastfeeding, whatever. And I, like, look in the mirror, and I'm like, these long, like, skinny, <laughs> like, they're like, it's the gap of, like, four inches for me. And I was like, I literally went home, and I said, looked at David, and I said, I'm scheduling a fucking titty console. Like, Do you have implants and a lift? Yeah. Okay. So I... Do you I know what size are your implants? Um, a 330. Okay. CC. So I breastfed Ziggy for like almost a year and then Stevie for 14 months Damn. and I knew when I stopped breastfeeding Ziggy like they were so bad but I also knew I was gonna have another kid so I was like I'll just wait so oh my god they were so bad and I almost just got implants and not a lift and she was like you no yeah she was like they're gonna sit so funky because you're basically she didn't want to tell me but like my boobs were so saggy it would have never worked I look at my before pictures and I'm like Oh, I showed Scotty a nudie once, and I was like, look at And he was like, oh, my God. Like, in his head, he's like, poor thing. Like, how are you still getting it? So on my left, she had to take tissue out because that was the boob. I that do feel like guys don't milk. care. No, he, I don't David think would they care. never care, but it was 100% for me. Exactly. Like, I'm sure he's super excited now yes. and he loves it, but he probably wouldn't give a shit. It was like when I wanted to go braless, and I had to, like, tape up all this loose skin so same i always have said i would be fine with having small boobs i'm not fine with having big boobs that are saggy because you can't thing. wear anything that's no. what's so frustrating i'm like there's two bras in this bitch i can't wear anything backless i'm strapping them up to the heavens like it's a whole thing yeah i have a photo of me trying on clothes at urban outfitters and i'm in a bra <laughs> and i took a photo my the entire bottom of my left titty was literally hanging to my belly button under my bra and no. i was like this is unacceptable no it was i mean all titties are beautiful don't get me wrong but it's also it's all about just you do you though yes like if that's you your body good, and you love it amazing yeah whatever makes Rock you it. feel good and confident and i was at the point where i got a tubal ligation after my c-section with stevie so i can't get pregnant again even if i tried and i was like this is like my feel good era and I want to feel good in my body. Amazing. Do you feel really good? I do feel really good. Good. Um, tell me about your boobs. Um, I had a lift as well. When and, was that? An implant like eight months ago. So okay. I actually had a lift after I had Kinsley. Okay. I can't even remember. I want to say it was like through three or four, probably four years ago or something at this point. Mm -hmm. She was like maybe two and a half. It was, oh, no, it was. It was like right around the time of, um, bef right before my divorce, I think. And um, so I had very small implants put in and she left uh, they left like my natural tissue and they just got saggy again 
And so we ended up taking out a lot of my natural tissue this time because obviously if it fails the first time, it's going to fail again. And then putting in a bigger implant. So it was like the same size that I was naturally, but actually like full and perky where I had no volume up here or anything. And I got shit at first because so I have a built in a bra, like the mesh under it, which um, they do. And then it like disintegrates or disappears or whatever. I want to say it's like 18 months in or something. And that's to help them. So they stay really high at first and then they fall like a little bit. And I'm so happy with where they are now, but they were like in my chin at first, literally. And people were like, your boobs are so high. And it's like, you know, shit, like yeah. they have to be high on purpose because then they're going to fall. And that's the point. Like if these started out where I wanted them to be, then they're going to be back down here again. And we're yeah. at square one. Exactly. I know so many people that I got lifts before and now their boobs are like sagging back down on their belly buttons. Like gravity is a real exactly. thing. Exactly. And the tissue has already failed. That's why you had saggy boobs in the first place. Totally. So I needed the built-in bra mesh situation. I'm really glad I got it. And I would do it again for, I would allow them to be too high for a while. Because who gives a shit? Like six months of your life versus yeah. years and years and years. So what size is your implant? Was 415 or something? Oh, Minor different slay. sizes. I'm going to say it's like 415 and then 420 or 25 or something but again she took out so much of my natural yeah. tissue so it was replacing the natural boob I guess yeah do you think you'll ever have more kids I don't know I yeah. genuinely don't know I think if it was really important to my partner if I find one <laughs> that you will that depending on the time frame right like if I find one in a time frame where I can still have kids it's not off the table it's not something I feel personally really hardcore about like absolutely have to I have such an amazing child mm -hmm. so for me I feel fulfilled and if I don't find that I feel really blessed that I got that experience one time with her if it was an absolute deal breaker for someone else and that person was the love of my life then yeah probably but I don't necessarily need it on my own accord so I'm open to the possibilities of that shaking out either way what fills your cup like, if you're, like, having a rough day. Good question. And. I don't pay you the big bucks for nothing, huh? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> and Kinsley's at her dad's, and you're like, you know what? I need a day for court. Like, what would fill your cup? Spending time with my mom. Liz. And my family, like, with Kinsley is really important. But if she's at her dad's house, spending time with my mom, my mom really, really grounds me. She seems like such a badass. You did you listen to the first episode? Yeah, you get to know her really well. She's really that. badass. I love her. She's so cool. She's so resilient. Yeah. She's such a badass. So spending time with my mom really grounds me and my best friends. Like really spending time with the people that I love, I think is absolutely what fills my cup up. Working out or going for a walk or doing something physical and spending time with the people that I love and getting dressed up, looking hot, putting an outfit on I love, doing my glam. I genuinely like that. I'm so comfortable without makeup. I don't feel like I need makeup. I don't feel like anybody needs makeup. Very comfortable and confident without it. I like it. Mm -hmm. I want to do it. So I think getting glam, spending time with my friends and my family and yeah. going on a walk or getting some form of fresh air. You hooked me on walks like a long a time ago because before I remember, they were a thing no you, really they were like it was my saving grace during quarantine yeah like the, i would put headphones on and just go for a walk because i would see your stories and i was like i'm gonna go for a walk I and it really that. helps it really helps i was going through my divorce at the beginning of quarantine and the walks saved me Mm -hmm. Because again, we were living together at this point. So I would go for a walk and I'll never remember. It's like such a low point for me. I'm on my favorite walk, which is down by this lake. And I do this whole three mile walk and I get down to this spot and I made myself a promise. I go down to the spot. I stand there. I just pause no matter what I'm doing. If I'm on the phone, I hang up. I tell the person I have to call them back. If I'm listening to a podcast, I pause it. I'm listening to music. I just sit there for a couple of minutes in silence and I just breathe. Mm -hmm. and I just exhale and I just thought... And I'm sitting there. I just ended a phone call and all of a sudden I lean over to look in the water and I'm just sitting there and I'm thinking, I'm like, you got this. And one of my AirPods falls in the water. <laughs> I just see it go You're like, like down to the bottom of the fuck. lake. And I was like, fuck me. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me got this. right now? I was like, this sucks. And then I just like did the rest of my I'm walk. And I just, I had this thing that I say where I'm always like, not today. Yeah. Not, not today, today Satan. Bitch. Like I'm not dealing with this today. Absolutely yeah. not. And it was one of those moments where the headphones hit the water. I didn't even bend down, try to get it. I just saw it spiraling just like me down to the bottom of the lake. And I thought, you know what? Not today. Yeah. I'm just going to let that go. I think 
walks, like something small, like a walk is important for people that are constantly like sharing their life or Such on their phone all the mental. time. Like I just like need to put my phone down. Like I told you on your podcast, like I'll just put like plug my phone in and put it in the kitchen nook and just leave it be and go in the playroom with like with my kids or like spend time with David because you just have to disconnect. And I feel like getting fresh air in a walk makes the biggest mood change for me. Yes. And you taught me that. Thank you. I that love mean, that. That means so much. It's very refreshing. Yeah. No, and it, it really can is. switch your mood. It can change your perspective. Makes you feel, makes your problems feel small sometimes. Yeah. I like to get out and get fresh air and allow my problems to feel small because people are dealing with so much worse. And to be able to sit there, it's the same way that I feel about going to the beach. Mm -hmm. That's why the beach is one of my favorite places on earth because you can sit there or looking at the stars and you can put your feet in the sand and look at all of the tiny little grains of sand everywhere and just think like, wow, as big as my problems seem, sometimes I am so like, minuscule in the grand scheme of life. It's okay. It's going to be okay. The sun will come up tomorrow. It will keep shining and everything will be okay. And I think when you're allow yourself to get that perspective you can move forward in such a better headspace yeah okay well on that note i feel like we'd have to end it there because that was so iconic <laughs> oh great give it like literally courtney she'll leave it to her to give like the most like iconic life quote at the end you she and you're making like, me blush girl but you're like that off camera too where you have like the best life advice just like in the back of your head at all times thank like it's you. always coming out and i love that and i truly learn stuff from you every single day so thank you I'm proud to have you on Cheers. I'm proud to call you a friend. And thank you for being here. Love you. It's been an honor. I love you. Well, I know you don't have anything in your glass. I don't have anything to cheers. cheers. I think that's bad luck. I'll cheers you with my water. Slay. Thank you so much for being here. Anytime. Cheers, guys. Bye, guys.